could CERN cause the um, universal catastrophic vacuum decay? Could their experiments bring about such a vacuum in space and um, in the universe? I'm sure it's very, very possible. And um, that was one of the concerns of Stephen Hawking. Um, let's come over here to this right here. Let me come over here. We've got some images. I'm going to start right here putting the, the search that I have. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it in the live stream. Um, I'd, I'm going to put it in the live stream right here. Our first link, because that's what I started off with. I'm going to do that. I'm going to close that. Hello there, Apple Brooks. Hello, you all. Thank you for joining in. I hope you can hear me. I do. Let me. Okay, we got this on live chat. So, um, I started thinking about Stephen Hawking's, and you know, he has many things that he spoke about. Um, he warned us to stop reaching out to the aliens, according to the physicist Stephen Hawking's. We should. Stop reaching out to the aliens. He's warned us. Um, stop trying to contact them at all because reaching out to an advanced civilization could put humanity and Earth in a pretty risky situation. And the bad news is we've already been broadcasting our location to the universe for years. He uh, continued warning uh, in a new online film called Stephen Hawking's favorite places. So do you think he was just saying that? Do you think Stephen Hawking's had some knowledge way beyond his um, age? Um, it is possible and people do have knowledge that you think where did you get the knowledge that you have? And, and really that is true. A lot of people have tons of knowledge and it's, it's unexplainable how they acquired it. It really is. But I think he was a, a very prominent person. He was a well-respected physicist uh, in his time before he passed. And um, some people listened to what he had to say, and then some people didn't listen to what he had to say at all. So um, let, let's see this right here. Let's, let's look about this God particle. Think, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I've got this open right here. Let's come over here to this. And I'm going to... Um, put this timestamp right here. This is from this website. I've not really been to it before, but we are going to put this link in here too to document every single space that we went to. And welcome if you're all just tuning in. Let's look at this. So this is CERN. It looks like CERN under development. It does. Um, you know, it really does look like a time machine. It does. And it kind of looks like the, um, let's see if we can find the, um, I don't know, uh, Let me see if I can find anything if I type that in, Anunnaki Time Machine. Boom. Well, um, we got something like this. What do the Anunnaki want with Earth? Ancient Sumerian, ancient. Um, yeah, you can see something like this, Atlantum. Um, it looks as if they had something that they carried around in their hands, too. These... Um, like time traveling they carried something around in their hands let me put this in here because this is a link that we've also went to you all i just want to um cover everything that we document right here just put it in here just you know if people say gina would you put the links yes gina honey is going to put those links for you so we we've got this right here there and time machines are spoken about what is this is that is that real did somebody make that up okay because i don't know about that and that's okay, you all. It is. Um, and then look at this. Um, we have um, a flying machine. Am I over here? Yeah, I'm over here. Right there. They got this astronaut looking being uh, on a building right here. So Anunnaki, um, H.G. Wells time machine right here. Why would he? H.G. Wells. Okay, that's okay, you all. That is... Um, but let's get back over here to this uh, right here. Stephen Hawking, uh, in his forward, 
for the new book, Star Must, Five Years of Man and Space, Stephen Hawking warns that the Higgs boson particle, also known as the God particle because of monotheism, uh, discovered by CERN scientists in 2012. Isn't that interesting? Because that just so happens to be, you know, when the Mayans, the end of the world, uh, according to the Mayan calendar or something like that. It had something to do with the Mayans um, 2012. And why would they go and do their experiment in that year? Um, they thought, um, he learned scientists in 2012 and thought to give it matter, its mass, okay? They thought the God particle um, was to give matter its mass, and it could destroy the universe, and we wouldn't see it coming. Uh, that's what Stephen Hawking said. In an excerpt from his book, um, the Higgs potential has the worrisome feature that it might become metastable, at energies above 100 billion giga electron volts. Never heard that before. That I wonder if that's what they're running at right now. 100 billion giga electron volts, GeV. Uh, this could mean that the universe could undergo catastrophic vacuum decay with a bubble of the true vacuum expanding at the speed of light. And this could happen at any time, and we wouldn't see it coming. And if we wouldn't see it coming, would we have any forewarning? Or would it all just, they let us find out, you all. But this is, um, I think what they're doing, This is, it is kind of, um, it's kind of scary if you think about it. Because, you know, they're playing with dark matter, I think. The physicist adds that there is no need to worry at all about the foreseeable future. A particle accelerator that reaches 100 billion GeV would be larger than Earth. And it's unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. Well, I think we've got a different climate uh, right now. I really do. So they explain that Hawking may be theoretically correct. Maybe. Okay, you might as well said... They might as well said that Stephen Hawking, Hawking is theoretically correct. Okay, that's their way of saying, yeah, yeah, he's correct. Uh, the technology necessary to cause the catastrophic vacuum decay isn't feasible, and the Large Hadron Collider doesn't exasperate um, the particle's destructive potential. But does it? Did they... Um, did they destroy five universes? And did they destroy our universe? And we got stuck in a parallel world. And our world is now turned upside down. And we're trying to um, figure out how to ground ourselves in this new world that we find ourselves in. Uh, I think something's going on. One thing should be made clear. The discovery of the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider did not cause this problem, and collisions at the LHC could not trigger the instability because their energies are far too low. Hello, now their energies are really, really ramped up. See, this was, see, yes, this was the article. See, this is them. They, they're a little short-sighted is what I think they are. You all look at this. This is 2014. Now we're in the year 2022, and um, they're working at Philip Pullman. Hmm. They're working at an increased speed and like someone said today they're going to run that speed till the year 2025 and and then how is that possible how can they do that you are this is september the 8th of 2020 okay september the 8th of 2014 um why was this article look <gasps> oh my gosh look Stephen Hawking's particle could kill us all if science gets enough. Look what this person wrote. Not if we kill God first. Oh my gosh. Did you all just see this? Who is this person? Oh my gosh. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me go back and see this. You all, where did, where am I reading from? Certainly, a citation is needed. Why would they quote him if a citation is needed? That, um, yeah, 
P H I L L I P P U L L M A N Let's see if they got written down. There there there's this guy right here. He realizes, look at this. This guy was serious, you all. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I've heard of this before. His dark materials. Oh my gosh. The Golden Compass? I remember trying to watch that and it was a very, um, very strange movie. You, I'm going to put this link here because that doesn't sound very nice at all. It doesn't, um, at all. Let me put this here, you all. Let me paste it. Let's save it. Oh my goodness. So... Thank God for Philip Pullman. Oh my gosh. Who, what was this his dark materials about? But he likes, um, oh my gosh, look at all of this. This person. He's, um, I think we've read enough about that person. I think we have you all. This person sounds like he is, um, he's quite, um, verbal. He really is. He's very verbal, um, is what it is. Um, yeah, that's a movie as well. I don't think I want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. I think, um. We can see a lot of stuff being done with CERN. Could you imagine um, if there were people with that mindset inside of CERN, uh, in control of CERN, having a say-so as to what is done? That could be quite scary for humanity because certainly that type of thinking uh, does not speak for me. And I don't think it would speak for you. I really don't. Uh, and I don't think it would speak for the majority of humanity. Okay, I don't. Yeah, oh, I'm not going to watch it. Don't you worry about it because, um, no, it, it sounds very dark, dark, dark matter, dark, um, dark matter, you all. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is, um, that's, that's really, um, strange. It really is strange. So, um. He also warned about, Stephen Hawking's also warned about the perils of artificial intelligence. Um, even though we can, uh, we can um, benefit from it, but then something happens uh, in his thinking. You all, oh my goodness, I wish I would not have seen that, but that's okay. We looked at it and that's all right, you all. CERN is, um, I'm not reading from that no more. I don't like it. I don't like the energy behind it. This is Stephen Hawking's. Uh, he was a, a ma like a mastermind. He really was. He had so much knowledge, and then he was, um, something happened to him. It did, and he was like trapped in his mind is what happened. That's right, you all. We got to keep our vibration high, even though CERN is doing their experiments. Let's type it in right now. CERN. Um, It's changing reality. It, it really is changing um, reality. Let's see it. CERN experiment. No, I'm not doing it. CERN experiment July the 5th. Let's put this right here. Um, I don't know which one they did, but they did something, you all, today. And this is July 5th. Of course, um, July 5th is over for that area right there. So let's look at this. Um, Celebrating the 10th anniversary. Oh. Um, the post on the CERN experiment will help you understand the exper experiment's um, specification. Um, it's sensational. The CERN collider due, due in the July the 5th effects. Um, Atlas. Atlas. 
CMS and Atlas at CERN um, expect more collisions during phase three, phase of run three than in the previous LHC physics run. The collider is expected to reach a new world record of 13.6 trillion electron votes. Are they gigavotes? Because um, that's what um, Stephen Hawking was talking about, those uh, giga electron votes. Does anyone know if um, they left out the word giga electron vote, uh, votes? Because that was, um, the, he told you what would happen. It would be a, a instability. But this is 13.6 trillion votes. But the theories where people say that CERN is planning to open a portal to spiritual beings might be false because it's, it is more scriptural. No, wait a minute. It's more scriptural. Can, okay, CERN experiment is the most sensational experiment. It plans a series of events from the 3rd to the 5th. And on July the 3rd, a special evening of around the globe of science and innovation with the filmmakers who made the documentary Particle Fever. A live webcast of the event will be available online uh, and will be a full-day scientific conference at CERN's main auditorium. Then on July the 5th, CERN will start a new period of data tracking at the Large Hedron Collider called Run 3. Oh, I'm doing good this evening. I have stayed busy all day long. Um, I went from project to project, and um, my evening is not done yet. Not even after this. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I am not, but um, thank you for asking you all. This is, look, CERN's experiment is really important. Um, it's an important event or experiment. However, there is reason for this experiment. It's celebrating its 10th anniversary of discovering the Higgs boson or Higgs particle. Uh, it's an it's elementary particle that Peter Higgs discovered, called it the God particle in 93, and Higgs particle is also a very rare find, and it doesn't last long. If it doesn't last long, they got to keep it in something. Do they have to keep that um, Higgs particle in something, like in stasis, capture it? Um, and what do they do with they, if, hey, if they capture it, does that have something to do with the real, you know, the the substance? Do they have some of the substance like that in there too? They do. They, they might. You never know because it is like a, um, what do they call that? The, the real is like a, um, some type of substance and I'm sure they use it. Um, yes, hello. Um, that's exactly right. So look at this. So um, it's exciting. So you all, what is, um, I, I don't know exactly what's going on. I really don't at CERN, but um, they've got it going on. They do. You can see all these articles right here. Let's look at this. What time is CERN going to be turned on? Let's look at this, you all. Let's hope it's not a, oh, look at this. It's trending. Um Look at, look how fancy it is. It looks so scientific because it is, Gina. Two hours ago, you all, it's all set to restart the Large Hadron, Hadron Collider on July the 5th. But what time is it going to be turned on for the entire world to see? Oh my gosh, could you imagine, you all, if we, <laughs> if we were setting at our homes and if we were in front of the computer or a TV and they were broadcasting la live, that happening and showing the sky above and then boom a great big old black hole or something opened up i would not want to see that and see in something coming out of it or in it like a gigantic portal because they do have the technology you know they do um that would be wild you are so so wild oh i did not i didn't um i didn't um i'm sorry i did not write that in there let me put this in here for you all yeah since we went there we document that's what we do here. We like to document. Yeah. Um, has anyone seen that? Yeah. Has anyone seen that turned on yet? 
People have been bringing up theories around CERN's collider being turned on after years, but it just happens to be scientific research. After being shut down for nearly four years, well, you did a lot of um, upgrades during that four years, and you know you did. It's about to start this third round of experience, and people can watch it too. Wow. Look at that. Um, it's going to be turned on at 10 a.m., 4 p.m. CEST. The entire event is going to be live streamed for people to watch. On its website, CERN notes that scientists will study the properties of matter under extreme temperature and density uh, at CERN's uh, Atlas Collaboration. We will measure the strengths of the Higgs-Boson interaction matter and force the particles. They will force the particles to unprecedented precision, and they will further their researches for Higgs-Boson decays to dark matter particles, as well as searches for additional Higgs-Bosons. Dark matter, you all. That's really what they're after. Dark matter. The we will further our searches for the Higgs-Boson decays. They want to watch the Higgs-Boson decay to dark matter particle. Isn't that what they're saying? Dark matter and um, dark matter. Dark matter. Unpredictable. It really is. It's unpredictable. They don't know about it. Um, look, it's not hypothetical either. Look at this. Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter thought to account for approximately 85% of the matter in the universe. Dark matter is called dark because it does not appear to interact with the electromagnetic field, which means it does not absorb, reflect, or emit electromagnetic radiation and is therefore difficult to detect. So it could be here and they could bring it in and it could grow, but it would be so hard to detect it. That's what it sounds like. It would be very, very hard to detect that dark matter, you all, please comment in here because you all got some good information. You really do really good um, explanations. Let's, um, I don't know what this box is. Let me, I don't want to click into it, but I did. Um, let's look at this um, box. If, it, if it's something, since I clicked into it, now I've got to put it in here, you all. Dark matter. I don't like dark matter. Um, plasma is um, something to look at, but dark matter. It's it's one of the stages of matter. It is. Let's see this, you all. So dark matter holds our universe together, and no no, no one knows what it is. Um, let's see when this is written. 2021. If you go outside on a dark night in the darkest places on Earth, you can see as many as 9,000 stars. They appear as tiny points of light, but they are massive infernos. What? Um, if you go outside at night, on a dark night, in the darkest places on Earth, you can see as many as 9,000 stars, and they appear as tiny points of light. But they are massive infernos. That's what they just said. They're massive infernos, really? L look at this, you all. This is not, this is not a massive infernal. It isn't. Um, it's a star, but it's it's not a massive infernal. Look at that. Does that look like a massive infernal? 
I think they need to um, look at the sky. I really do. This is not a massive infernal at all. Mm -mm. This is something much different, you all. So um, I had to do it. I, I really did. I had to put that on there, you all. <laughs> I love it. They appear as tiny points of light, but they are massive infernals. And while these stars seem astonishingly numerous to our eyes, they represent just the tiniest faction of all the stars in our galaxy. Um, Linda Hinojosha. Hinosha. Um, it's a star. Um, I actually have a video playlist on this YouTube channel and it's concerning the stars and it has the beautiful music and beautiful movements of these stars and you can you can check it out. I, I would highly encourage you but the stars are not massive infernals uh, and that playlist will tell you other you'll see exactly what these stars are. They're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. They are. I had to do it you all. I did. Um, the beautiful challenge of stargazing is keeping this all in mind. So we're talking about dark matter right here. Um, so um, look at this. The unexplained stuff of dark matter. They believe that there are five times more in the universe than normal matter. And the stuff makes up you and me, stars, planets, black holes, everything else you see in the night sky or touch on Earth. It's strange even causing, calling all of that normal because in the grand scheme of the cosmos... Normal matter is the rare stuff. But to this day, no one knows what dark matter is. Um, it's, um, I think um, dark matter is um, something that CERN has a pretty good idea of what it is. I really do. And that's why they do in their um, experiments and stuff. It, it's it's one it's one massive it's very very impressive a machine a, 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 it's a feat of technology um, I don't know how they put it together I don't even know how they even figured it all out really could you imagine the minds of the people the knowledge all the knowledge combined together brought forth this enormous how, how long is it? Miles and miles on the earth. It stretches for miles. CERN stretches for miles. Underground, you all, it does for miles and miles. Um, let's see the 10 facts about it. Since we've clicked into here, let's look at it just so we can. Put this in here one more time, you all. We're going to do it because... Um, yeah, CERN is, a, it is interesting. It is. Um, let's document this. That way no one says, Gina, honey, you did not document it. Yes, I did. Um, let's look at this. So 10 mind-blowing facts about the CERN. Look, see, there's that phrase, you need to know. And that really started, I think that phrase started back in around 2016, you all. Because I started hearing it everywhere things you need to know, three things you need to know. Um, and I won't keep you much longer at all. Um, in September, um, so they'll smash together the subatomic particles. Let's, let's find, I'll do it, um, 24. It is the world's biggest machine. Indeed it is, the world's biggest machine. There it is right there. It is um, 17 miles, um, circuit it's 175 meters buried at a depth of 175 meters which is 575 feet um, it was buried out of respect for the natural landscape they say which sounds slightly ironic considering the massive damage the collider could possibly cause down the road so this person is not too happy with it I think <laughs> it's a massive there is a massive gravitational pool. CERN Collider is composed of some 9,600 supermagnets which are 100,000 times more powerful than the gravitational pull of Earth that fire proton, protons around a circular track of mind-boggling speed. A beam might rotate for up to 10 hours traveling at a distance of more than 10 billion kilometers enough at 
to make it reach the far reaches of our solar system and back again. Traveling just below the speed of light, a proton in the LHC will make it uh, will make one eleven thousand two hundred forty five circuits every second. Uh, let's see when this article was written because they have boosted this up. Uh, 2015? No, it's doubled now, honey. It has doubled, I think. Um, they got all these filament. They got 36 twisted 15 millimeter strands. Um, wow, 6,000 to 9,000 single filaments. Look, um, oh my gosh, the... The, kilo the 27 kilometer link of the LHC demands um, 7,600, which is 4,100 miles of cable, which amounts to about 145,000 miles of strand, more than enough to circle the Earth six times at the equator. Um, and if the filaments were to unravel, they would stretch to the sun and back five times with enough, enough to left over for a few trips to the moon. CERN generates at extreme it generates extreme temperatures um the unbelievable hot temperature it can reach how hot you ask about as hot as the conditions in the universe after the big bang or more than 100 100,000 times the temperature of the sun this will be achieved cern says by accelerating and colliding together two beams of heavy ions an epic scientific event that will take place. I didn't know that they were making it really hot. You, I didn't. Uh, all I heard about yesterday is it, it's colder than space itself. And now they're talking about how hot CERN can get. Stephen Hawking is worried. Um... So let's see this. The God particle found by CERN could destroy the universe. He wrote in his book, um, it could become unstable at very high energy levels and have the potential to trigger a catastro catastrophic vacuum decay, which would cause space and time to collapse. And we would not have any warning to the dangers. Um, well, how much energy is keeping it together? So look at this, 2008 is when CERN first started firing up the engines on an atom smashing machine. There's Stephen Hawking's. Um, they are opening doors to other dimensions. Oh my goodness, they say the super collider could open otherworldly doors to another dimension for a very tiny lapse of time, mere fractions of a second. However, that may be just enough time to peer into this open door, either by getting something out of it or sending something into it. So they want to send something in it. I thought people died there. I thought some people died there, you all. Um, of course, um, Berta Colucci um, said... After this tiny movement, the door would again shut, bringing us back to our normal four-dimensional world. But it would be a major leap in our vision of nature. And, of course, there would be no risk to the stability of our world. Um, they say that uh, there's fears that CERN Collider could unwillingly, unwittingly invite unwanted visitors from other time space dimensions anybody from dinosaur dinosaurs uh, to alien life forms seizing the entire planet uh, such scenarios at least for some scientists are no longer confined to the fictional world of isaac asimov novels with ongoing work at cern there is even more talk of opening up a portal for time travel um, so, um, this is, uh, the Brave New World, uh, dystopic, yeah, this Brave New World. Will we be able to control, um, technology that we have created? CERN's choice of, um, geographic location, um, let's see where it's at. It, observers will help notice that the town in France where CERN is partially situated is called St. Genis Polia. 
Ah,、uh, the name Pulley comes from the Latin Apollinicanum. I can't say it. It is believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo, and the people who lived there believe that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on the same spot. On the same spot, you all. Hello there, Apple Brooks, honey. Religious leaders, suspicious of the aims of the scientific world, drew a connection to the verse straight out of Revelations, which makes the name Apollon.、Um, the verse states, "To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a kind over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit." Whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollon.、Uh, now, trying to tell a spiritual leader that the Bible is a conspiracy theory, okay, tapping into dark matter. You all, I hope this is all right. This is a pretty、um, good. I, 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 I want to know this. I really do.、Um, astonishing astrophysical observations have demonstrated that all visible. Physical matter accounts for only four percent of our universe. Now the race is on its turn to find the elusive particles or phenomena responsible for dark matter.、Um, so、um, they hope to achieve it to separate it by the way of atom smasher, the invisible dark matter which has been described as the very glue that holds together from the vin- from the visible.、Uh, there's one problem. Nobody has any idea of the consequences that will be if the goal is achieved. So once again, the dark versus visible paradigm has generated a battle that transcends the scientific world, becoming a question involving philosophy and spirituality. The CERN logo. Um, so um, the public relations.、Um, let's see the CERN logo. So we see it right there.、Um, there it is, you all. Um, so let's see. It looks like it has like a circle on it, and another circle, and a line, and a circle. Yes, the deity of destruction as corporate mascot. Although most corporations shun any connection with religion and the spiritual world, CERN has chosen as its mascot a Hindu goddess, but not just any.、Uh, outside the headquarters sits the ancient statue to Shiva, the ancient Apollyon. The goddess of destruction, right there outside of CERN, right there you all. Yeah. And I've really never heard of her before, but until this journey started, so yeah. Look at that. No democratic debate. CERN is present, wrapping up the largest collider in the world. Um. CERN is has been the trailblazer. Okay. Yeah. So eighty nine. You have it. That's where the World Wide Web was、uh, created. CERN began the World Wide Web project, which led to the first web page in history in 1993. Wow! So、um, the statements, the views, and opinions expressed in this column are solely those of the author, and they do not necessarily represent those of RT or anyone else、uh, reading them. Uh, so you all, yeah, that's pretty、um, interesting about CERN. I I think we put that in there. It's pretty,、uh, it's a pretty massive machine with all these wires and stuff and、um, trillions and trillions of dollars. I bet I really do.、Um, I wanna I wanna thank you all for looking at this, you all, because、um, that's a lot of valid points that was brought up. You know, they could open portals. To other dimensions, the、uh, gateways,、um, and the the location that it's sitting at.、Um, I'm sure that was chosen for a particular reason. I am, and、uh, just and they want to just be able to open up a little doorway, just even for like a, I don't know how long it was, a millisecond, just to get something in or get something out. I bet they want to open it a little bit longer,、um, but all it takes is just a, like that. And how do you know、um, time may not exist as we know it on that side? On that side, that's probably all it would take. Just boom! It, it would probably be opened long enough、um, for anything to come through. It probably would,、um, but that's okay.、Um, yeah. So、um, it is a 
It's important what's going on there, and I hope that they are, they're responsible in um, their experiments, and I, I really hope they are, and they take uh, into account the lives of millions and billions of humans on the earth, and um, yeah, because it does affect us, it does, and even though they may do things and not tell us, and it has a direct impact on us, um, doesn't mean that we we're okay with it okay even though we may not know we're not okay with it especially if you threw us into a parallel world i'm not okay with that i wish you wouldn't have done it but we're here um yeah so i'm going to go you all thank you so much for tuning in and thank you please um your comments are very much appreciated i like going back and reading them and i know a lot of other people do too um, it is a, it's a good place to gather uh, all your knowledge for other people because it, it validates what other people are thinking and you will share probably something that someone didn't know. I, I know I, I'm learning a lot by reading through the comments, things I didn't know and knowledge is power for all of us. Um, so with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours. Love you. Have a wonderful evening and thank you. I'm Apple Brooks. And if there's any other um, moderators on here, thank you. And thank you all for your comments. Um, you're, uh, you're wonderful. You really are. Good night, everyone.